It was 1941 and the world was at war. The entire nation unified to work together both on the battlefield and the home front to achieve victory. However, the United States had difficulties in balancing as a society between unity and protecting minority rights. One Supreme Court case in particular embodied this issue after a state law was passed that required students to say the Pledge of Allegiance and salute the flag, even if there were religious objections to doing so. What are the boundaries to the constitutional right of free speech? And how can a minority be protected in its opinions? This is the story of West Virginia Board of Education v. Barnett. In late 1941, the United States entered the conflict after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. Americans saw World War II as a great struggle between the free nations of the world against the forces of tyranny, including Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, and Imperial Japan. In general, Americans were united around the common effort to win the war. But it also demanded a degree of conformity to certain patriotic opinions and respect of patriotic symbols. Questions soon arose. To what degree would individuals be compelled to participate in patriotic activities? The court had recently dealt with free speech and patriotic symbols and rituals in the 1940 case of Minersville School District v. Gilbitis. In that case, the Supreme Court upheld a Pennsylvania law, making the flag salute compulsory in public schools by an 8 to 1 majority. Jehovah's Witnesses had argued that saluting the flag went against their deeply held religious beliefs. Unfortunately, after the decision, they were threatened with severe punishments, including having their children declare juvenile delinquents for refusing to salute the flag. They also faced popular repression from other members of the community. It seemed like an example of a majority violating minority rights. As a result, a group of West Virginian Jehovah's Witnesses led by Walter Barnett brought suit against their children's school for making the Pledge of Allegiance and flag salute mandatory. They argued that the state law violated their constitutional rights to freely exercise their religion by not saluting the flag. The school board argued that the law was a legitimate way to instill patriotism among young people and was consistent with the Gobitis decision. The lower court at the federal district level sided with the school board. Barnett appealed the decision, landing the case before the Supreme Court. So did the compulsory flag salute violate the First Amendment? And further, could the Supreme Court reverse its very own recent decision on the issue? By a 6-3 majority, the court reversed its own decision it had made only three years earlier and ruled that the law violated the constitutional right of free speech possessed by the Jehovah's Witnesses. The court ignored the religious liberty argument of the plaintiffs and focused on the principle of free speech. While the court admitted that the state had a legitimate interest in inspiring patriotism through the study and practice of civics, it stated, quote, we are dealing with a compulsion of students to declare a belief. The court affirmed that the constitutional principles of all would be protected. Justice Robert Jackson wrote the opinion for the court majority, stating, quote, the very purpose of a Bill of Rights was to withdraw certain subjects from the vicissitudes of political controversy, to place them beyond the reach of majorities and officials, one's right to life, liberty and property, to free speech, a free press, freedom of worship and assembly, and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote. A member of the dissent was Justice Felix Frankfurter, who argued that the court was exceeding its review powers and instead acting as legislators. He wrote, quote, The uncontrollable power wielded by this court brings it very close to the most sensitive areas of public affairs. As appeal from legislation to adjudication becomes more frequent and its consequences more far-reaching, Judicial self-restraint becomes more, and not less important, lest we unwarrantably enter social and political domains wholly outside our concern. The dissenters in the case concluded that the court should follow the precedent established in the Gobitis case. The decision was part of the incorporation of the Free Speech Clause of the First Amendment, whereby the Bill of Rights was applied to the states. It was also a landmark constitutional law case for symbolic speech with dispute over the act of saluting, as well as a milestone case about compulsory speech, since the plaintiffs were required to say something and argue that they had the right not to speak. Justice Jackson concluded his opinion with the statement, quote, If there is any fixed star in our constitutional constellation, it is that no official, high or petty, can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, or other matters of opinion, or force citizens to confess by word 
or act their faith therein. The West Virginia v. Barnett case was predicated upon the principle that the government could not compel citizens to hold certain ideas they disagreed with, nor could it eliminate dissent. This was true even if it was related to cherished national symbols. Over the following decades, the court would protect free speech in other controversial cases, such as students protesting the Vietnam War in school in 1969's Tinker v. Des Moines, and the burning of the American flag in 1989's Texas v. Johnson. Because of the constitutional principle of free speech, Americans will continue to enjoy the right to deliberate, debate, disagree, and dissent. What will be the next case that brings these questions before the Supreme Court? This has been the case of West Virginia School Board v. Barnett. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and drop us a comment. And for more videos on American history and civics, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.